Howdy folks, in this video we're going to take a last look at the filter function. Uh, we're going to see uh, not only how it works in practice, a little bit of a preview for things to come, I'm also going to show you a shortcut version of it and show you or talk about why it is a good or bad idea to use the shortcut version. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm here in iterators.xlsx and I'm in the filter shortcut tab. Our first five uh, iterators, sum x, max x, min x, and average x, are aggregation iterators. Uh, they add a column to a temp table and then aggregate it. Uh, they add up all the values, they find the biggest one, the smallest one, and they take the average. Filter, as we've seen, uh, also takes a temp table, adds an expression column to it, but just keeps the true rows and produces a temp table. So it produces a temp table, not a number. Okay. So uh, I mentioned before that uh, one, of the, one of the places that you use this is to prep temp tables to be used as filters. So I don't want to go through the full process because it's a little early on for that, but I do want to just show you what it looks like kind of in code, right? So um, imagine we're in a situation like this where we've got a filter context of to go. And in that filter context, well, we've got a filter of type equals to go. However, the calculation that we want to perform uh, is sales for to-go dinner, okay? So we're half of the way there filter-wise. We have a filter for to-go, but we need to add a filter for dinner, right? So uh, we would use this code right here uh, to do just that, and we would use the calculate statement to actually add it to the filters. So the iterator part is gonna produce the temp table for dinner, and then calculate will actually stick it in the filter context. So uh, I've already gone ahead and grabbed the derivation of all the values of shift, visible or not. So we've got lunch and dinner. We then add a column to it where for every row check to see if the, that row's shift is equal to dinner. Uh, lunch is not equal to dinner. Dinner is equal to dinner. So what does uh, this produce right here? If I drive this temp table, add this column to it, and just keep the true rows? Well, we won't get lunch, but we will get dinner. So let's head over here to our answer. Type in shift, hit enter, and type in dinner. Okay. So this code, lines three through six, produces this temp table right here. Because we've used this code inside the calculate function, and calculate is a revisor, what calculate will then do is it will take this temp table and add it to the filter context, producing this filter context right here with a filter to to go, which we had a second ago, and now a new filter for shift equals dinner. And with that in place, uh, all, now we only have the rows visible um, in this mini table that are both to go and dinner, so we could go ahead and do whatever else you want to do, but for example, we could go calculate the dinner to go sales or something like that. So when I say uh, the filter function preps temp tables to be used as filters, uh, that's what I mean. The filter function actually, it goes ahead, drives a temp table, whittles it down to just the values that we want, and then you use a revisor like calculate to actually stick it from there into the filter context to change the filter context to something else that you want. Okay, so that's part one. Part two, if you've taken a DAS class before, uh, you may have seen what I just wrote written a different way. And you may not have known that they were the same thing. <clears throat> if I've got this code right here where I use the calculate function, I know we haven't talked about it yet in this class, but I've got a sinking suspicion some of you have seen it before, right? Uh, calculate is the, the, uh, the function that changes the filters, right? So if you use calculate and you've got some sub-expression, maybe you're calculating total sales or whatever, Right? You want to do this under a changed set of filters, a revised set of filters. Well, one way you could do it is the way we just did it, where we use the filter function to uh, whittle down to just the temp table we want, and then it gets passed into the filter context by calculate. You can also rewrite all of this code uh, in this form down here. Right. So lines three through six, you could shorten to just this right here. Mini shift equals dinner, right? Now this only works inside of uh, the arguments of the calculate function, it doesn't work elsewhere. But if you use them in the arguments of the calculate function, this snippet of code right here is a shortcut way of writing this, and hence uh, produces a temp table like this, okay? So this and this produce the same results. Uh, this is similar to the sum x versus sum shortcuts that we saw a little while ago. And uh, I'm gonna caution you, as before, I actually don't recommend starting out by writing uh, your DAX this way, because if you write it like this, it's very difficult to see what's actually going on. Uh, now, in this version on the bottom, it's easy to see the intent. I wanna calculate something with the new filter of shift equals dinner, 
but it's a little harder to see uh, how this bit of code actually produces a temp table. Well, how does it produce a temp table? Well, just like above, right? It goes ahead and drives all the shifts, right? Control C. It adds an expression column based on that right there. We're going to see if each row's shift is equal to dinner. We get a false for lunch because lunch does not equal dinner. And then we get a true for the bottom row because dinner does equal dinner. So this produces a temp table that looks like this, right? And uh, then calculate, we'll take this temp table and add it to the filter context. And it works perfectly well. Um, but in my experience, if you write things like this, you're not going to remember that this is the builder pattern right here. It's an example of the builder pattern. You will not see the derivation. You will not see the filter function. All you will see is the, the business rule that you're trying to add to your formula. You're trying to add a business rule of shift equals dinner, uh, but it's hard to look at this and see the, the iterator, I'm sorry, the derivation and the iterator and the resulting temp table. Therefore, I recommend when you're learning DAX, don't write it like this, right? Write it like this a couple hundred times. Uh, if you've written it so many times that you can see this code down here and understand that it translates to this, that's fine. Uh, but while you're learning DAX, be sure to try and write it this way as much as possible. Because when you do, it will really enforce the idea that there's not many things inside of DAX. It's just uh, table derivations, iterators, and revisors. And if you write it this way, it's nice and easy to see. So that's, that's what I recommend.